Hello there, it's uh, Nigel Owens here and welcome to Whistlewatch. Well, welcome back to the farm in another episode of Whistlewatch, where we'll be dissecting some of the big decisions, the big talking points over the weekend. We'll be looking at the uh, red cards in that physical, huge, exciting game out in Marseille. And also as well, I'll be giving you my predictions on the World Rugby Awards coming up as well. But first of all, before that, your Emirates fans questions. Here we go, Charles HXPE. At Nigel Ref Owens, I've started my studies to become a rugby referee and I'm 43 years old. How far along do you believe I can get? Any recommendations? Would love and appreciate your insight. Thank you. The most important thing is you enjoy it thing and, and learn from people as well. Um, and listen, you know, it should be, no matter what your age is, it should be, you'll get as far as your ability should take you. So maybe in a few years' time, if you're refing very, very well, you may be climbing the ladder. I think it'll be tough ask you to get to the World Cup, mine at 43 years of age, eh? But you never know. So keep at it and enjoy it. At Slim Rick 208 asks, uh, what is the rule with a ball being transferred to the back of the mall? Does it have to go to a player at the back or can anybody have it? Key thing is here, when the player comes down, usually from the liner to set up the mall, for that ball to be transferred to the back of the mall, it has to be passed back through the player. So basically the guy with the ball can't slip back through all his own players and arrive at the back. The ball must be transferred back to the back. And then when you're at the back, another question that people have been asking is, you have to be fully bound. So sometimes what you see is a guy bound with one hand, full bind is from your arm or hand until your shoulder, uh, with a ball in one arm. And then as the mall moves, he sort of tries to catch up because the mall has moved too quickly for him. We don't tend to penalise that, but certainly if somebody is just holding on to the back of the mall, with a hand, not a full bind, and the ball is here, then that would be classed as what we call a truck and trailer, which would be obstruction. Alex Papazavaz, do you have any early predictions for the World Cup in a year? Ooh, do you know what? I, I do. I think it's going to be very difficult to beat France wherever they play at the moment, but particularly in Paris. Colin Thompson, you've worked in many countries over your long career. Do you have a favourite country or city? Oh, do you know what? I love going to everywhere refereeing, but I do have a bit soft spot for, for Cape Town in South Africa. I loved it out there, especially refereeing in Newlands, great stadium. And that's it. That's all your MRS fans' questions this week. Thanks for sending them in, and keep sending them in, because I'll be back next week as well to answer some more. Uh, let's look at the uh, France-South Africa Detroit red card for dangerous play. Now, let's make one thing clear. This is dangerous play. So when you look at the actual incident itself, the head contact, it is dangerous play, it is a red card. There is no doubt about that. But the interesting thing is that if you look just before the contact, there is a push by a fellow South African player into Detroit, which causes him then maybe to land up with this action. So the interesting is here, who gets the red card? Does Detroit get it? Does the player who pushed it get it? And that basically come down to your interpretation on the day as a referee. So to wrap it all up for you, yes, a red card. If you feel that Detroit was in the position, nothing you could do about it, it's a red card to Detroit. If you felt that the push caused it, then you would be quite right in giving a red card to the player who pushed him. So. There you go. Dangerous play, red card. Another red card in the France game. Wayne Barnes getting his 101 caps, passing me. About time to Barnesy. Now, what we have here is a dangerous outcome. So, the player up in the air goes for the ball. Dupont, although he's on the ground, still looking at the ball, uh, he then causes Colby to go over and land in a dangerous position. So. The duty of care here is on the player on the ground. You have to be aware of what you are doing that may cause something dangerous to happen. So in this instance here, Wayne Barnes felt that Dupont put himself in the position and caused Colby to fall in a dangerous position and therefore gives the red card. Now the interesting thing here about the Detroit and the Dupont red card is you could really look at these two and say, well, there's no intent here. They haven't 
try to do something dangerous or try to do something dirty in the game. That is irrelevant. As a referee, you can't judge on intent. You have to judge on the outcome of what has happened. Uh, if we look at Sipili Falate's try in the France South Africa game, late on in the game, people have been asking, why is this not double movement? Well, it's a very, very interesting one. And I have to say, it's a very, very difficult one to judge as well because what you certainly have is a ball carrier who may not be tackled but is in a position is not supporting his body weight so if you felt that he was tackled or he was on the ground he's only then allowed to place out in one movement so if you felt there was another movement and another movement whilst he was on the ground then you would be looking at the try being disallowed if you felt that it was momentum he was actually going to ground and then managed to get over like wayne barn saw then you would give the try so i'm afraid to tell you it's really one of these difficult ones which are very very tough to call and the thing that people have been asking you why didn't tia moore come in and why didn't they look at this again well, the TMO couldn't come in because the communication system was down at that time. So the referee couldn't hear the TMO and the TMO couldn't speak to the referee. And that Wayne Barnes is there on the spot and gives the decision as he sees it. So it's one of those really, really tough ones to make. England, New Zealand in the Women's Final World Cup. What a great final. Uh, congratulations to everybody involved and all the officials as well. And what a wonderful job they did throughout the tournament and in the final as well. Quite a clear, straightforward one here. Um, Thompson goes in upright. There's no attempt to sort of go down low and, and make a tackle. They go in upright, makes contact with the head. Then it becomes a direct contact with the head. It's dangerous play and it is a red card. This is why we want players to try and get in low. Another one in the England uh, New Zealand game, which has been a talking point a little bit, was the Simon yellow card for the head contact as well. Now, if we're looking at consistency, um, we are probably looking at the red card here. Yes, they well could be contact with the shoulder first, but they're still head-on-head -head contact, which is at force and is dangerous. So this as well should be a red card. That's it for Whistle Watch. I hope those explanations helped you understand some of the talking points over the weekend. Now, on the 20th, we have the World Rugby Awards coming up. So I'm going to throw my vote in and tell you who I think may be the winners. Now then, on the 20th of November World Rugby Awards, let's have a look at the nominees and who I think may win or who will get my vote. Let's start with the Women's 15 Breakthrough Player of the Year. Some very, very talented ones here. I'm going to go for Ruby Tui. She is such a character, not just off the field but a brilliant player on it as well and she really has come through this year so i think she will be the winner of that one uh, but anyway what do i know men's 15s breakthrough player of the year i really am torn here some great talent here uh, capuzzo for italy or dan sheehan for ireland do you know what I am going to split my vote between the both. I really can't choose between the both of them. So it's going to be interesting to see which one of these wins. Coach of the year. Oh, now then. I just think winning that World Cup against a very, very good team, uh, the World Cup itself, I wonder if that could be just enough to get Wayne Smith the vote. I think it may. Women's 15 player of the year. Now then some really talented players here as well but somebody who really shone in the women's world cup particularly against wales and in the final against england as well uh, and in a lot of other games as well i'm going to go for potia woodman of new zealand on this one hugely talented player men's 15th player of the year oh now then i am going to go for my vote this time goes to josh van der Fleer. so as a former winner of this accolade the world rugby's referee award good luck to everybody who is in the running for that. And sadly, that's it for this week's Whistle Watch, but I will be back next week to answer more questions, to go through some of the talking points. And listen, put your questions in the comments, put your comments in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, bye-bye.